We're excited to share some amazing archaeological discoveries with you in this video. We know that many of you are fascinated by ancient artifacts, and that's what you come to our channel for. We don't like to disappoint, so from intricate jewelry to beautifully crafted pottery and beyond, the treasures in this video offer a precious glimpse into the past. The discovery of human remains in and around the world-famous site of Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England has long fascinated archaeologists and the public alike. Although the exact date of the monument's creation remains unclear, the skeletons found in 2001 were buried on the site between 3600 and 2200 BCE. While some have suggested they may have been the victims of human sacrifice, it's very difficult to prove that theory, and insufficient evidence has been gathered yet. Most of the human bones that have been found in the area have been on display at the Stonehenge Visitor Center since 2013. However, some local druids have lobbied for their reburial, arguing that they're the descendants of the druidic pagans who built the monument and they have the right to bury their ancestors where they wish. Experts have debunked the claim that the site was built by druids, but some still highlight that while the bones are fascinating, they were once living people and should be respected as such. For now, the remains remain on display in the Visitor Center's permanent collection, providing a unique insight into the people who lived and died at this ancient site. Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, we present to you the fabulously named Column of Death. Legends say that this strange stone pillar in San Pablo Villa de Mitla, Mexico, is capable of predicting how long you have left to live. That would make it an ominous object even if it wasn't inside an ancient burial chamber. Historians believe that Zapotec referred to Mitla as the city of the dead and buried their people deep inside subterranean tunnels there. The column is within one such tunnel. It's said that if you wrap your arms around the column and feel it move, your death is imminent. Another version of the legend says that touching the column in any way unleashes a curse. So the stories aren't consistent. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your perspective, the column is now off-limits to tourists. So many people have hugged it over the years that it's been damaged by human contact. Nobody knows where the legend comes from, but that's hardly surprising when we don't really know what went on within the building that surrounds it. Yes, there were burials here, but the rooms and tunnels are too elaborate for them to have been simple tombs. In a burial mound from the early Bronze Age in Georgia, researchers in 2014 found well-preserved wild fruits that were left behind as nourishment for the dead for thousands of years ago. These fruits were found to be preserved in honey, which was also found on the bones in the burial chamber, suggesting it may have been used for embalming the corpses. Honey has a low concentration of water and a high concentration of sugar, which can dry up bacteria cells before they can get to the food or remains the honey is protecting. The ancient Assyrians also preserved corpses in honey, and it's said that Alexander the Great found large quantities of 200-year-old purple dye well-preserved under a layer of honey when he seized the Persian city of Susa. In addition to the fruit and honey, the burial mound contained two four-wheeled wagons, as well as ornamented vessels, amber beads, 23 golden items, textiles, arrowheads, and a unique wooden armchair. Evidence of ancient robbery attempts was also found, including tunnels into the chamber and disturbed artifacts and human remains. It's possible that the robbers had attended the burial ceremony, as some evidence suggests that they knew what was placed where. The ancient city of Mosul in Iraq was desecrated by the vandals of the terrorist group Daesh several years ago. But much of the damage is currently being restored by experts. In the process of those repairs, new discoveries are being made. As an example of that, here's a set of 2,700-year-old Assyrian rock carvings that were found in October 2022. Eight murals have been found in total, all of which feature depictions of scenes of war etched into marble slabs. Mosul is still an active and busy city today, but these ancient works of art have been found in Mashki Gate, which is the oldest part of the city. Daesh tried to bulldoze it in 2016, but as with everything else they tried to do, they were mostly unsuccessful. Mashki Gate was one of the largest gates of the Assyrian city of Nineveh, which once stood at this spot. 
The images on the slabs are accompanied by inscriptions which confirm they were made during the reign of King Sennacherib, who ruled the Neo-Assyrian Empire between the years 705 and 681 BCE. As the repair work continues, more discoveries are likely to be made. The Fort Mojave Twins are two ancient geoglyphs located in the Mojave Desert along the Colorado River in Arizona, USA. They're believed to be among the earliest geoglyphs in North America, possibly dating back to 900 BCE. The figures are said to represent good and evil, with the larger twin symbolizing good, or perhaps an ancient god, while the smaller twin represents evil. The twins are situated south of Fort Mojave and east of Avi Casino, perched on a bluff overlooking the river. Although they're accessible by following a dirt road, visitors are warned not to enter the fenced-off area surrounding the site. The mystery about geoglyphs like this is that they're large designs or motifs created on the ground, often using rocks or earth that can only be viewed from above, which the people who created them can't have done. The Fort Mojave Twins are significant not only for their age and rarity, but also for their cultural and historical significance. They offer a glimpse into the beliefs and practices of the ancient people who created them, and their mysterious presence continues to fascinate and intrigue modern visitors. If you love wine, you'll also love this next discovery. It's an ancient winery that was found in a cave in Irene, Armenia in 2011. It's so old that archaeologists believe it to be the oldest winery in the world. Scientists have been able to carry out tests on a wine press at the site and have determined that it was first used around 6,100 years ago. A 5,500-year-old leather shoe was also found in the cave, and experts think the discoveries might be related. Local historians say that wine was made in the caves as part of a ritualistic process, perhaps a burial celebration, which involved people removing their shoes. We think it's more likely that the people who made the wine simply took their shoes off before trampling on the grapes. But we digress. The presence of wine was determined by chemical tests that revealed traces of malvidin, which is a plant pigment that gives red wine its color. The traces were detected on both the wine press and on fragments of pottery inside the cave, indicating that wine was pressed here and then stored in pots for later use. We know that wine lovers enjoy a good vintage wine, but 6,100 years might be a little too old even for their tastes. Located in Jordan, the ruins of Jerish are a picturesque reminder of a once great Roman city that was hidden under the shifting sands for hundreds of years. The ancient city of Gerasa, which once welcomed the likes of Alexander the Great and the emperors Trajan and Hadrian, was destroyed by an earthquake in the year 749. The ruins were rediscovered in 1806 by German explorer Ulrich Jasper Seetzen. Today, Jerish is one of the best-preserved Roman cities in the Middle East, offering visitors the opportunity to marvel at extraordinarily well-preserved mosaics and carvings, witness full-speed horse-drawn chariot races, and experience Roman army battles and gladiatorial fights. We don't mean carvings or paintings of them, we mean actual gladiatorial fights. The Jerish Heritage Company puts on daily spectacles known as the Roman Army and Chariot Experience, featuring 45 legionnaires who demonstrate battle tactics in armor, gladiators who fight each other, and a seven-lap race in Roman chariots. This allows visitors to witness history reenacted in the ancient Hippodrome of Jerish, where real Roman athletes and warriors once talked, ate, drank, and fought. Zeta the patron saint of Lucca, Italy, is one of the so-called incorruptibles, the name given to the bodies of Catholic saints that have miraculously never decomposed. Zita was a peasant girl who became a servant in Lucca at the age of 12. Known for her hard-working nature, kindness, and for giving leftover bread to the poor. After working as a domestic for many years, she was promoted to head housekeeper and allegedly became capable of miraculously turning flowers into bread. Upon her death in 1272 at the age of 60, it's said that church bells spontaneously began to toll of their own accord. In 1580, her body was exhumed and found to be incorruptible. Her remains were then placed on display in a silver casket in the church where she had prayed while alive. She was finally canonized in 1696, 
Her body is naturally mummified and on display in a chapel on the inside right-hand side of the Basilica di San Frediano. Although her body is allegedly incorruptible, it is browned and wizened with only her hands and face uncovered for viewing. Every year on April 27th, citizens of Lucca bake bread and bring flowers to San Frediano to celebrate her feast day, and the saint is brought out to be touched by the pious. Haran, a village in Turkey located on the route leading from Nineveh to Karshemish, boasts a rich history that dates back approximately 5,000 years. One of the most striking features of the village is its primitive but beautiful beehive houses. These structures are at least 3,000 years old and are made entirely of mud or clay bricks. They were designed to fend off scorching heat and retain cool air. The dome-like structure of each house, topped with an opening, collects hot air in the upper part of the house and allows it to escape through the aperture. These houses have proven to be a testament to human ingenuity by withstanding earthquakes, violent windstorms, and heavy seasonal rains. Due to their durability, they're still in use today, thousands of years later. Moreover, the beehive shape makes it relatively easy to expand the size of the house by simply erecting another hive next to it and knocking an archway through. Although Haran has been reduced to a nondescript village by the passage of time, these beehive houses are a living legacy of the area's grandiose past. In the 8th century, Carigua was a prominent Mayan city in ancient Mesoamerica, located in southeastern Guatemala at the crossroads of important trade routes. Today, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home to countless surviving stone remnants of the formerly great city, including the Great Plaza and 17 sandstone stelae and zoomorphic monuments. These monoliths are engraved with intricate details and serve the Mayans as calendars, storytellers, and royal icons, among other things. The Mayan rulers commissioned these standing stones to commemorate their achievements and record important astronomical and seasonal events. One of the stelae, which stands over 30 feet tall, features hieroglyphic texts describing significant social and celestial milestones and passages from Mayan mythology. Another, Stella C, erected in 775, marks the end of the Third World and the beginning of the Fourth World, according to the Mayan Long Count system. Some modern doomsayers predicted the end of the world in 2012 using this system, but the Carigua Stella still stand today attesting to the ingenuity of ancient Mayan culture. They've remained standing for so long that they've survived beyond the time their creators thought the world would come to an end. Our next discovery is a little more famous than the ones we've examined so far. It's an ancient sculpture known as the Jockey of Artemisian. This Hellenistic era bronze statue is so named because it depicts a small child riding a much larger horse and dates to somewhere between 150 and 140 BCE. Very few original bronze statues from ancient Greece have survived to the present day, and none of the others depict racehorses. Most statues like this were melted down so their raw materials could be reused many centuries ago. The Jockey of Artemisian was protected because it was trapped inside a shipwreck off Cape Artemisian, not to be rediscovered until 1926. The same shipwreck also yielded the Artemisian bronze. The statue of the horse and its young rider was broken into several pieces when it was found, but was reassembled and restored slowly and carefully over a period of many years before going on display in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, Greece in 1972. Historians have speculated that the work of art might have been plundered from Corinth by the Roman general Mummius during the Achaean War in 146 BCE but that can't be proven. The Burgley Neff is an opulent salt cellar made in Paris in 1527 to 1528, designed in the shape of a late medieval era ship with the hull made from a nautilus shell. The salt cellar is parcel gilt and is placed on the back of a mermaid mounted on a hexagonal base. The nautilus shell itself was a unique and rare natural curiosity. In medieval France, the word nef was used for different kinds of boat-shaped containers, including ornamental pieces used for dining tables or buffets of the wealthy. The Burgley nef has both an ornamental value as well as a functional purpose for holding personal cutlery or spices. 
It would have served as a symbol of the social status of the most important person at the table and was placed in front of them during meals. Tiny figures of the lovers Tristan and Isolt engaged in a game of chess can be seen at the foot of the main mast. The artifact was discovered in the basement of Burghley House in Stamford, England in 1956. It's now part of the Victoria and Albert Museum collection in London. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.